we've known for a long time that there are a number of factors which uh, influence a woman's risk of breast cancer, and that includes genetic factors and lifestyle factors. Um, well, what we've managed to do now is we've identified a lot more genetic factors um, and that, that improves the prediction, but it's also putting these together with the lifestyle factors. So you, you basically combine the risks and that, that's what makes it much more informative um, in terms of identifying women who are at both high or low risk of the disease. A lot of the questions that seem to be asked are, are sort of questions that uh, can be responded to by the patient who might obviously try to lower her uh, alcohol intake uh, or, or various other things. Are, is it clear that obviously if you get accurate uh, results from these patients, you know, be it through blood samples, be it through answering these questions, that you're going to get the right uh, result? Or do you think there is still room for error if someone underestimates how much alcohol they drink, for example? Well, we've only we, we've included factors which uh, which women can answer fairly reliably. We know from from past studies. Um, uh, so, so there are other factors which we which we haven't included, but the factors we we've included are, are, are things which are, are are fairly reliably reported. So we're we're quite happy that this this method uh, gives us accurate results. And do you think, uh, very quickly, do you think women will want to know their chance of getting breast cancer, given that that might mean they're living with a sword of Damocles over their heads? Uh, well, we, we think so, but there are, there are still um, further studies to, to, to be undertaken now to, to see whether how acceptable this, um, th th this sort of individualised prediction is. is and, uh, um, you know, we'll, over the next um, two or three years, we'll need to work out, you know, what proportion of women really want to know this sort of information.